The stillness of the condo is unnerving, a stark contrast to the chaos that churns within me. It's been three days since Anna left, and the silence is as invasive as the cold that seeps through the windows, untouched by her warmth. Taco, our little chihuahua, is my only company now, a tiny heartbeat against the vast emptiness that has become my world. I sit on the edge of our, no, my bed, hands clasped between my knees, trying to absorb the reality that Anna won't be walking back through that door. Taco nestles against my foot, his presence both a comfort and a reminder of what we've lost. He doesn't understand, of course. He just knows that the center of his universe has vanished, leaving behind a lingering scent and a pile of unanswered questions. The condo is filled with ghosts. The indentation on the couch where she used to sit, curled up with a book. The empty hook beside the door where her keys, now gone, used to jingle cheerfully. The void in the closet where her clothes hung, a spectrum of colors now reduced to the dull tones of my own attire. And the cat, her cat, who would have been perched on the windowsill, now a missing whisper in the quiet. It's surreal how quickly life can pivot on a single moment. Six days ago, we were discussing what to cook for dinner. Five days ago, she told me she wanted a divorce. Four days ago, I discovered her secret conversations with him. And then, like the final act of a play I never auditioned for, she was gone. I've been trying to piece together where things went wrong. Our marriage wasn't perfect. No one's is, but it was real, at least to me. We didn't argue over the trivialities that seemed to consume other couples. We were in sync with our finances, our dreams, our daily routines. And when we hit bumps, we sought help, sitting on a therapist's couch working through our issues until resolution brought us back to each other's arms. I had thought those sessions were our strength, proof that we were willing to fight for us. But now, I wonder if they were just a charade, a delaying tactic for the inevitable end that only Anna saw coming. I've never been one to raise my voice, to let anger dictate my actions. My military training, combined with the heavy shadow of PTSD, had taught me the value of control. I thought she appreciated that about me, the quiet strength that I wielded like a shield. But maybe it was that very shield that pushed her away, a barrier she could no longer breach. I glanced down at Taco, his eyes fixed hopefully on the door. Every car that passes by sends him into a frenzy of excitement, followed by a crestfallen slump as he realizes, yet again, that it's not her. He stopped eating his little body a testament to the grief we're both feeling. I worry about him, this loyal creature who doesn't understand the human complexities of love and loss. Anna's departure didn't just shatter my life. It broke Taco's spirit. And as I sit here, in the dim morning light that filters through the blinds, I can't help but feel responsible. I was supposed to protect them both, to be the anchor in the storm. Instead, I'm adrift, struggling to find a reason to pull myself out of bed, to face another day in a world that suddenly feels alien without her. I know I must move forward, for Taco's sake if not for my own. But today, in the silence of this empty condo, moving forward feels like an insurmountable task. The days linger, each one bleeding into the next with the slow crawl of time that only the heartbroken truly understand. I find myself roaming the condo like a specter, haunted by the life that used to fill these walls. Taco follows me, his tiny paws padding softly behind, a constant shadow to my aimless wandering. I'm beginning to recognize the contours of our home in this new dim light, the way the evening sun no longer brings a glow to Anna's favorite painting, how the kitchen feels too vast without her humming a tune while stirring a pot on the stove. The dining table, once a place of shared meals and conversations, now stands as an altar to the empty space between us. In the midst of this, I grapple with the shadows of doubt. How could I not have seen the signs? Was I too wrapped up in my own healing, my own struggles with PTSD, to notice her growing distance? Our therapy sessions replay in my mind, each word scrutinized for hidden meanings, each gesture analyzed for signs of her waning affection. I recall the therapist's careful probing, 
the gentle questions designed to unravel the threads of our connection. We always left hand in hand, a united front against the challenges we faced. But now, those memories are tainted, the solidarity we projected nothing more than a mirage. It's not just the emotional ties that bind me to the ghost of our marriage, but the practical ones too. Anna's education, funded through my veteran benefits, now feels like a transaction in which I invested everything, only to be left bankrupt. She graduated with her master's degree, a milestone we celebrated together, not knowing it would herald the end of us. I've been trying to distract myself with the routines that used to define our days. I water the plants she loved, though their leaves droop in the absence of her care. I cook meals for one, the flavors dull without her to share them. I even try to watch our favorite TV shows, but the laughter feels hollow, echoing off the walls with a cruel reminder of what's been lost. Taco's presence is both a balm and a burden. His need for care forces me to function, to maintain some semblance of normalcy in the wreckage of my life. Yet his grief is palpable, his confusion a mirror to my own. We are two beings, bonded in our sense of abandonment, trying to navigate a world that shifted beneath our feet. The condo, once a sanctuary, now feels like a prison. Each room holds a memory, each piece of furniture a story. I can't escape the feeling of her everywhere and nowhere a phantom limb that still sends signals to my brain, even though it's been severed. I lie awake at night, the darkness pressing in, and wonder what it was that I lacked. Why wasn't I enough for her? How could she move on so swiftly, so resolutely, as if our years together were nothing but a stepping stone to something better? I find no answers, only more questions, and a creeping fear that I may never understand. The silence of the condo is a constant reminder that sometimes love ends not with a bang, but with a whisper, a truth I'm only beginning to accept. Every morning I wake to the gray light of dawn, a symbol of the half-life I now lead. The shadows cast on the walls of the condo seem to mock me with their stillness, a sharp contrast to the turmoil that rages in my heart. Tycho stirs beside me, his small form a reminder that life, despite its current cruelty, persists. I shuffle through the rituals of the day, a routine that has lost its partner, but retains its shape. The coffee brews, a bitter aroma that fills the kitchen. I pour a cup, the liquid heat a ghost of the shared mornings that once began with kisses and shared dreams. Now it's just a caffeine necessity to kickstart a heart that feels sluggish with despair. The silence of the condo has become a canvas for my introspection, a space where the echoes of my thoughts grow louder with each passing day. My therapist's words float back to me, a lifeline in the fog of my confusion. Growth often comes from pain, she said, but this growth feels more like a stretching of scars, a test of how much I can endure before breaking. I find myself staring at the door, half expecting Anna to walk in her smile chasing away the gloom, her laugh a melody that used to fill every corner of our home. But the door remains closed, and the only sound is the faint ticking of the clock, a metronome to my waiting. Taco's sorrow is a weight around my neck, his little eyes searching for the one who is not coming back. I feed him, coaxing him to eat, his reluctance a mirror of my own loss of appetite. We sit together in the silence, companions in our grief, our bond strengthened in the absence of the one we both loved. I've been sorting through our belongings, a task that feels like sifting through the ruins of a life once whole. Each item I touch is imbued with memories, a tangible piece of a past that refuses to let go. There's the mug she bought on our honeymoon, the blanket we cuddled under on cold nights, the books we argued over with playful banter. They are relics of a time when happiness seemed as easy as breathing. But now, the air is thick with questions that have no answers. Why did she leave? Was there something I could have done? A word or gesture that might have anchored her to me? Or was this ending written in the stars, a fate I could never have changed? I venture outside, the world moving around me in a blur of normalcy that feels alien. People go about their days, unaware of the fracture in my universe. I walk the streets, 
the fresh air a small reprieve from the stifling atmosphere of the condo. Taco trots beside me, his leash a tether that keeps me grounded when all I want is to float away. The city park is a patchwork of green and gold, the leaves whispering secrets I can no longer decipher. I sit on a bench, the wood worn smooth by countless others who have come here seeking solace. I watch a couple walking hand in hand, their laughter a distant sound that stirs a mixture of longing and resentment within me. As the sun begins to set, casting long shadows across the grass, I realize that this, too, is part of the healing process. The acknowledgement of pain, the acceptance of loss, and the slow, reluctant embrace of a future that must be faced alone. I return to the condo as the day wanes, the approaching night, a cloak that wraps around me. I feed Taco again, and this time he eats, his small victory a sign that life, despite its current shade, continues. We settle in for the night, the darkness outside a match for the darkness within, but with a sliver of hope that tomorrow might be a shade brighter. Mornings now begin with a hesitant acceptance, the first weak rays of sunlight stretching across the bedroom floor, bringing a fragile newness that neither Taco nor I can ignore. Each day, the condo feels less like a mausoleum of our past life, and more like a blank slate, albeit one stained with memories. Taco has taken to following me more closely, as though he fears I too might vanish into the void left by Anna. His loyalty is a steady pulse against the irregular beat of my own heart. The condo, once a tomb, now begins to whisper of possibilities, a space that can be reshaped, reclaimed. I find myself lingering over photos of us, not with longing, but with a historian's eye. There was love there, unmistakable and genuine, but also an undercurrent of change, imperceptible then, but glaring now in hindsight. These still frames of our life together are not just relics, they are lessons etched in light and shadow. Forcing myself into the routines that once involved her is a struggle, but one that brings unexpected solace. I cook meals that are simpler, but I savor the taste of my own independence. I clean and rearrange furniture, asserting my presence in a space that no longer echoes with her laughter, but begins to resonate with my own resolve. The blog for disabled veterans is no longer just a thought, but a reality. Each keystroke is a step forward, a declaration that my voice, my story, has value. It connects me to a community of others who understand the trials of loss, both on the battlefield and at home. Their stories interweave with mine, a tapestry of resilience that blankets the coldness I've felt since she left. Slowly, I'm learning to navigate the waters of solitude, finding strength in the silent companionship Taco offers. His recovery, his small moments of joy in a treat or a scratch behind the ears, teach me that healing is not just possible, but happening despite the sorrow that lingers. I venture back to the park, a place that has become a sanctuary of sorts. The bench, with its worn wooden slats, holds me as I watch the world continue on. Children play, couples argue and make up, and old men feed the pigeons, each engrossed in their own slice of life. In their routine, I find a reflection of my own growing steadiness. One evening, as the condo fills with the golden hue of dusk, I receive a call. It's Anna. Her voice, once the melody to which my world danced, is now just another sound among many. She asks how I am. The words polite, distant. I tell her about Taco, about the blog, about the life that is slowly reconstructing itself from the rubble she left behind. She apologizes, a simple utterance that carries the weight of our shared history. But the apology does not shake me as it once would have. I've built a small fortress around my heart, not impenetrable, but resilient. I accept her words, offer forgiveness not for her sake, but for my own, and end the call with a quiet click that resonates with finality. That night, I look at Taco, his eyes bright with the reflection of the city lights, and I make a silent promise to both of us. We will move forward, not forgetting the past, but using it as the foundation upon which we'll build a new future. A future that is uncertain, yes, but one that is ours to shape. 
I turn off the lights and head to bed, the darkness no longer a foe but a familiar presence. And in the space between sleep and wakefulness, I realize that life is not about the grand gestures or the tragic endings, but the small, quiet moments of courage that lead us into each new day.